As you know, we asked you all to send in some questions for hashtag Ask Toto, and we were inundated. So, Toto, let's get straight into it. Difficult the, ones? They're not too difficult. I think okay. you'll know the answers. I hope you'll know the answers. So, the first one comes from Manolis on Twitter. What do you think is the best part of your job? The best part of my job? Well, there is many interesting bits. Um, probably the part I like the most is developing the organization. I keep uh, spend a lot of time in talking about, uh, about in thinking about how we can um, develop capability um, beyond the single individual, and I like that bit a lot. Fantastic, thank you for your question. Our next one comes from Nige on Twitter again. When do you start thinking about making the 2016 car, and do the drivers have an input? Um, the 2016 car started pretty early, um, in spring last year, and uh, gradually you move you move people onto the new car and uh, the drivers have an impact because by simply giving feedback on the current car, they impact the um, development of the new car. And we're hearing that development going on right now. Um, thank you for your question, Nige. On Facebook, Alfonso has been in touch saying, how do you prepare for new circuits and what is the most difficult part to get on point to face a new circuit such as Mexico last year and Baku this year? All the circuits today are laser scanned. So before we move onto the circuit, we can download the track into the simulator, into our computer model. And from there, we get certain simulations on setups, on aero balance. And then as the last bit, the driver goes in the sim and drives the track, um, the car on the track, so he can prepare. The next one's from Junaid on Twitter. Uh, in the history of F1, if you could drive any F1 car, which one would it be and why? I would never want to drive an F1 car. I think you need to know about your own limitations and uh, <laughs> I would only embarrass myself and others if I would drive the car. But if I can say which car do I like the most, I liked a lot the McLarens of the 90s. I remember that as a kid this was the dominant car. It looked pretty cool. Uh, Prost and Senna in those cars was uh, as good as it could get and, uh, and that was an era I enjoyed. Now the next question has come from one of our German fans. Thank you very much, danke schön. Um, we've translated it into English, so I'll read it in English and then if you could answer it in German and English, but starting with English, that would be great. Um, so do you think that Manor will be able to get some points this year thanks to the Mercedes engine and the Williams gearbox? Manor will make a big step up and not only because of the engine, but there is a good bunch of people coming together, impressive individuals, with the right budget and the right attitude and uh, Pascal in the car. So I have um, uh, confidence that the car will have, uh, the car and the driver will have highlights and uh, could, um, could be a solid midfield runner. In auf Deutsch now. Und auf Deutsch jetzt die Frage. Ja, eine sehr interessante Frage. Wie weit kann es mit Männern vorwärts gehen in diesem Jahr? Ähm, eine Gruppe ziemlich guter Leute sind da zusammengekommen, die in der Technik dieses Auto entwickelt haben oder mitentwickelt haben mit dem Pascal im Auto und unserem Motor, kann das Team schon für die eine oder andere Überraschung gut sein. Vielleicht im guten Mittelfeld das eine oder andere Rennen beenden, das wäre schon nicht schlecht. Gute Frage im Übrigen. Dankeschön. Right, the next question comes from Iruna on Twitter. Um, how concerned are you with the threat of Ferrari and also Honda next year? The threat is permanent. Honda is a huge organization with lots of resources and they were the power unit which had the most impressive development curve throughout 2015. Even if it was a very difficult year for them, it was still very good what they, what they achieved in terms of how they progressed throughout the season, so I have no doubt that they will be a strong um, strong competitor in the future. Thank you very much for that question. Um, the next one's from Robert and he's asking what's the most difficult part of running an F1 team? There are not many difficult parts. It's, uh, it's nice but uh, the, probably what you have to get used to is what we're doing at the moment. <laughs> it's the media. The whatever. media side, Toto. <laughs> yes, the media side. Whatever you say is being interpreted in a certain way and uh, sometimes ends up in the news in a way you didn't mean it to say or you didn't mean it to be in interpreted and this is what you get used to. Um, so I developed a system, I only read the best 5% and I feel flattered and I read the first 5% so I know who the enemy is. The next is from Chris, uh, he's saying if you could be a boss of another team in a different sport, which one would it be and why? Well I'm not really good in other sports and I think you have to, this is a world of specialists you need to understand your business and your sport inside out. 
and I've seen motor racing from all angles. I've been in the car and uh, in various cars and I've been, uh, I've been a shareholder of different teams from rallying uh, to rallying and Formula One and this is what, uh, what at least I believe I know a little, I understand a little bit but the rest would be would be really rubbish. If you would get me into football or tennis, I would be a nightmare. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Devon has asked on Facebook, um, how do you guys at Mercedes go about hunting new talented engineers and mechanics, and how does someone join the team? There are various ways. We are being proactive, so we are going to visit universities regularly, um, universities in the UK or in Germany, Switzerland, even in Austria, and we try to attract the best. So if you're interested in joining the team, uh, keep pushing, keep learning and have good marks and then you can apply on the company's website. If we haven't found you, you can find us by applying in the HR section of the team. Send us your CV and we'll have a look. Perfect, so it's a two-way street, it's good to know. Um, Jim has asked on Facebook, um, what would you say is Mercedes' biggest challenge that you'll have to overcome in the upcoming years of F1 racing? And do you think that F1 as a series will manage to turn the current drop in popularity around? As a team, because the environment always changes, the regulation change, the politics, um, you, need to be, you need to adapt yourself. Um, I've, I've read once that the most successful species is the one who is able to adapt itself most quickly and this is about Formula One, this is how Formula One functions. Um, so there are threats we know today but they are ones we don't know and they will appear tomorrow so you just need to be aware that everything goes, everything is possible in Formula One. In terms of the sport itself I think we need to stop talking ourselves down, this is important, there is some great news around the sport, we know joining an American team uh, coming in and many other exciting factors and uh, we just need to understand uh, where the media is going, are we watching the race in the same way we did 10 or 20 years ago, I don't think so and how do we need to adapt but uh, that is not my, uh, this is not my um, business, it's somebody else's and uh, I'm sure they will find the right answers. Well, we'll move on to someone who maybe doesn't know the answers on this, um, this question from Sarah. Um, Bernie has certain views on fan engagement and social media. Tell us why you believe differently or choose to engage differently and to do it so well. Well, there's a difference with what the controversial things Bernie says, because Bernie likes to be controversial and uh, what he thinks. Uh, as a matter of fact, Bernie is pretty aware that the social media are reaching huge audiences but it's also difficult for him because with the traditional TV it's how he generates income for Formula One and if he had to choose between selling the rights to a TV station or giving them to, for free to social media it's clear which choice he's going to make and I think it's a very difficult question to, to answer so in fact we can't ignore social media it's big and we see that growing for our own team and uh, thanks to you guys uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram are really big and uh, we just need to adapt to that new challenge and uh, see maybe in a couple of years we're going to watch the races, not through TV anymore, but maybe in a different form. But I'm not the expert, you know, I'm good with these cars behind us. <laughs> maybe on YouTube. Thank you, Sarah, for that question. Um, the next one comes from Silver Arrows Ham. If you could bring back one rule into F1, what would it be and why? One rule, that's a good question. Uh, what would I bring back? I'm not sure that there are rules from the past um, which functioned well. I'm thinking about refueling, but this could possibly make the races a bit boring. Maybe reduce driver communications a lot and let the drivers make more decisions themselves. Gives a bit of variability, unpredictability for the races. Mark, hashtag 46, has been in touch on Twitter and says, um, if you could have any superpower for a day, what would it be and why? Well, I don't think I would be sticking myself on buildings and climbing up is not so funny. Maybe flying would be interesting. Flying would be a good one. I but like I'm that. just thinking how to commercialize that. Who would be interested in me flying around? I need to what be careful. What about being invisible? Would you like to be invisible for the day at a Formula One race? No, no. Go into the other people's garages? No, you because I, yeah, I wouldn't understand what they have on the car anyway. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm not sure. I'm okay with what I have. I don't need to have superpowers. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you for that question, Mark. Um, Steph has asked, um, you're trapped on a deserted, desert, deserted island. Um, name your companion, 
food and a CD that you couldn't leave without. Live without. My companion for sure would be my wife. That's nice. Um, what else can I have? A CD and some food. What does Susie like? What would you have? You'd have you'd have to have some food that you both like. Yeah, well, That'd be no good. she couldn't possibly choose the CD because she has the worst taste in music. Okay. She's really in the 70s and 80s and lots of Scottish stuff, so it's very difficult for me. Uh, so I need to choose the music. What would I choose? Um, I don't know, she doesn't like my music either. So let's drop the music bit. Okay, so no music. Maybe you could just sing to each other. That would be nice. That's even worse. Okay, lovely. Uh, food, that. we are both into Asian food. Okay. So probably if there would be a Chinese around the corner on the deserted island, it would be nice. And Martin has asked, does Susie, back to Susie again, does she tell you how to drive when she's a passenger or do you think you're a better driver than her? Ooh, that's a tricky question. Um, Who's better? No, I think she's, it's hard for me to admit that, but I think she's the better driver. Yeah. For, so for all the guys out there, if your wife is a better driver, you can admit that. I know it's very hard, um, but I, I realize that. But I drive. Right. Because when she <laughs> drives, she says that I complain too much. If there are three lanes queuing on red light, she would always choose the ones with the most cars. And then I start complaining and then we get into an argument. She says she's never going to drive again. Then I drive. And so this so is So you're a bit more strategic maybe on the road. Yeah, maybe forward looking. Okay, so she might have the speed, but you've got the strategy. Yes, that's what I always say, but she's a bit upset about that, so you said it, it's okay. Well, thank you very much. That's all we've got time for. Keep an eye on the channel, because we'll have more from Toto throughout the season. <laughs>